uh, showcase our skills at building cars, fast cars, and uh, implementing the parts that we uh, design and manufacture here at 34 Motorsport. Uh, we like to build project cars to really put those parts to the test and uh, really get out there and show people that our parts work and we can bring these projects together. Uh, this year's project was our A4 Time Attack car uh, featuring a longitudinally mounted VR6 uh, Volkswagen engine. And uh, we built this car in particular to run in the Eurotuner GP uh, this year in 07, uh, but also to run uh, some Time Attack series such as the Redline Time Attack and um, also the Super Street Time Attack. And uh, we really want to get out there and show that a European car with our parts can really perform against some of the best cars in the world. We're really happy with uh, the performance of our A4 in this year's Eurotuner GP. Uh, we're against, going up against some of the best tuners in the U.S. and uh, the car has to excel in three very different areas of performance, drag racing, the dyno, and also on uh, the road course, uh, the streets of Willow Springs. We're really happy with the power the car made on the dyno this year. Uh, running over 40 pounds of boost, we were able to produce 648 horsepower at the wheels on the dyno jet dyno at uh, GT Pro. Considering we built this car for the road course, we're really happy with the, with the drag times that we displayed at the Eurotuner GP this year as well. Uh, we were able to run a 10.9 at over 134 miles an hour. And this is on you know, Falcon Street tires, not even a drag radial. Uh, in, a, in a pretty warm day, less than ideal track conditions. Uh, we did ultimately build the car to go fast around a road course. It's not by any means a properly set up drag car. But uh, 134 miles an hour, 10.9, uh, that was very uh, pleasing to us. We were definitely impressed and happy with uh, how fast the car uh, was on the drag strip. The 10.9-second uh, drag run uh, makes RA4 one of the fastest drag uh, A4s in the world uh, that we know of. Um, and with, with some more setup to make it a more drag-friendly configuration, like different tires and playing with the suspension, uh, we're, we're very confident that this car can get in the low 10s. Of course, we're very happy with the way the car performed on the road course as well, since that's really what we built the car to do well. Uh, the Stasis Olin suspension uh, did its job amazingly well. Uh, we spent a lot of time setting up the car during test days, and uh, with Christian's driving ability, uh, we were easily able to take the all-wheel drive on the road course uh, times, and that'd be one of the fastest cars of the day. So getting in the car the first time was, was pretty much an amazing experience. The car was, was great right off the bat. There were a couple of challenges that any Audi has put forth for us to overcome to make it handle. The first is, you know, the nose heaviness of a car like this. You know, we did, the very first thing we did was put some ballast to the back of the car that helped with the car turn in and mid-corner stuff. Um, we did two or three days of testing with the car. And the second and third day, once we got sort of the base set on the car was a lot of damper tweaking and little adjustments to make the car probably the nicest, like, smoothest ride I've ever had in a race car. The day of the road course competition at the GP itself is a wonderful day. The course presents a real big challenge for such a heavy car like this. Our, our A4 is such a grand touring car and the streets of Willows are is a very nice track for light small cars of which there were a lot there. So overcoming the weight of the car was a big challenge, but the car is so amazing, it was easy to do. You know, predictable laps and get used to the car in such a short time of just the morning. We were able to actually make the car go phenomenally fast. In the time portion of the day, we, our first lap was our fastest, with most of these cars being as high horsepower as they are. We clicked off at 26.9 at the track. Um, the car is so nice though, you can run these laps consistently. It's not like a car where you just have to throw it all out there and, and have one lap. The car was easy and the tires, for what they were, were great tires for an event like this all around and it let us run three or four laps like this in a row. So basically we were met with mating a Volkswagen VR6 to an Audi uh, longitudinal transmission, six-speed transmission. There's no existing OE or aftermarket supplies to do this. We had to build and design our own flywheel, uh, figure out our own clutch package, figure out our own starter. Uh, we did this basically from the ground up using some 3D modeling software. It's all CNC machined. Basically wanted to use available aftermarket clutch components for this setup uh, just to 
let the end user or you know customers that want to follow in our tracks uh, continue on with this with an easy, repeatable solution. Uh, thus far, the, the whole setup's lasted and, and proven itself for, through around 800 crank horsepower thus far, both with drag launch after drag launch and track day after track day, and it's uh, so far holding well. So now that we've got a flywheel, we need to start our mate to it. Uh, there's nothing available in OE, there's no aftermarket solution again. Uh, we were left designing our own. Uh, we used a hot rod motor and did, designed our own billet aluminum housing for the front of that to mate to the Volkswagen adapter plate and to our billet aluminum flywheel. It's really important for us to bring this car together to show that everything works. The engine, the drivetrain, our O34 EFI engine management system, uh, our own tuning on that. Um, the suspension that we put together with our partners like uh, Stasis and H Sport, um, and all the all the sponsors that we brought together are parts and companies that we work with every day to help make Audis and Volkswagens faster on the street and on the track. 